Hello there, subscribers of Zenon 3120's channel. I am not Zenon, but just give me a moment to explain what my purpose is here. Thanks to Zenon's wonderful kindness, I'm able to post an SOS video for you guys. My name is Etika. I am representing the Etika World Network, which is a very, well, not new, but sort of up-and-coming YouTube channel which specializes in Pokemon battles but not only that my friends we actually do a wide variety of other things as well but just a brief history of us we actually were posting Pokemon battles from on Diamond and Pearl and it sort of became a little bit of a hobby so we started posting battles under the name TR1 Iceman or rather not we but just I but then I found a group of friends who kind of liked the whole YouTube thing so we started up the Etika World Network posted some videos on the Pokemon Pit beta and they actually got us into the trials of the main channel but things didn't work out so well so we got denied but now we we are back revamped with a whole new setup everything HD super cinematic quality and are back and thankfully Zenon has recognized our channel and is giving us an opportunity to post on here so once again Zenon thank you for that but going into the specifics of our channel just so we don't waste too much of your time and by the way the details of this whole thing are on my phone so I apologize if I'm not giving you the eye contact that you would want but you know what I'll give you plenty of times to gaze into my loving eyes later anyway so going into the specifics of the channel we cover a wide variety of things my friends news videos product reviews Pokemon battles rap battles live updates enlightenment videos life hacks um, music videos you know basically we do everything and at least we try to so we're trying to get a general broad hold on a lot of the things that YouTubers love and attempt to bring it all to you in one good package. So that is what the Etika World Network is. In terms of long-term goals, we actually are planning on making a channel which is somewhat similar to the Pokemon Pit Beta, giving other smaller YouTubers who need some shine and who have the potential a chance to be able to get their videos seen by a huge network of supporters and viewers and subscribers. So that is the main goal here in terms of what the Etika World Network is. It's a little bit of a far-fetched goal. I realize this. However, I am taking some serious steps towards it as you guys can see because every single thing on the EWN or the Attica World Network is brought to you in a hundred percent super cinematic quality HD format so as you can see this is looking like a movie right now because we actually invested in the tools to be able to bring you guys a very professional setup a very professional audio it's going to be pretty much a huge effort to making a really strong channel so now um, I think I covered almost everything in the channel and oh, also in terms of our Pokemon battles every single battle that we upload is picture in picture same cinematic quality as you guys are seeing right now so this is what you're always going to be able to expect on the EWN when it comes to Pokemon battles so if you're interested definitely come by and take a look at our channel we have a lot to offer you guys and it's not just Pokemon although Pokemon is the main thing basically and I mean since you guys are Zen on subscribers I know you expect quality my friends we bring you quality you're expecting battles we bring you battles you're expecting just epicness we got that covered my friends so if you're interested check us out anyways now I'm not going to waste too much more of your time talking about the schematics of the channel and such I'm just going to go straight into the battle which is what we're all here for but before I do that let me just explain it to you guys I'm actually here in Times Square 42nd Street Manhattan New York City one of the main crossroads of this planet and as you can see it's a beautiful night here it's a little bit chilly a little bit misty the weather's a little under but at the same time there couldn't be a better night for this whole thing the lights are out the people are happy that everyone's just it's a beautiful night for this thing and I usually do narrations on site for these things as well so I figured this is a great time for me to bring this to you guys now going into the battle oh and as I said everything's on my phone so even the narration so this way at least it'll be a little bit easier for me to bring this to you guys now this battle with somebody that I fought in the Wi-Fi finder the small gun Wi-Fi finder and my god this guy was a challenger I mean whew, this was one of the best battles I had ever since I revamped the channel. So you guys are seeing the best battle I have. Like, Xenon, I saved this for you, man. This is... Oh, God. So anyways, his name was Anki... Anki F. Darkness. And as you can see, this guy came decked. Santine, Garchomp, Tyranitar, Scizor, Ferrothorn. He's got the Gliscor. He's got the Road on Wash. This guy's coming through with all the cards stacked against me. So, I mean, it's not going to be an easy match. It's not going to be something that you can just push off easily this is going to be something epic here so I got to make sure that I come fully decked and as you can tell my team isn't exactly well commonly referred to as one that would be able to handle the sand team I'm rolling with the Weavile which is a wonderful revenge Pokemon especially late game so I mean I feel it's really good for dragon killing then you have my Nidoqueen which is a sheer force life orb set defense EVs and special attack EVs no speed at all Nidoqueen is bulky so it can take a hit and then retaliate with a really strong special move you got my Dredagon in there who is also sheer force life orb which works really well because you're not taking that extra recoil damage and you can live longer which will definitely mean something in the sandstorm 
Bermuda with Magic Guard. I'm also going to be able to live pretty well in the sandstorm due to the fact that I have Magic Guard. And not only that, but mine is a Calm Mind Air Slash Roosting uh, Psycho Shifting Burn build. And my team mainly functions off of crippling physical sweepers by either paralyzing or burning them. So this way my strong wall breakers can come in and smash holes into the team. Next thing off you have Escavalier who is actually a bulky variant. Mine is extremely bulky and it has really, really good bulky stats. So it's a great Pokemon to have on the team. It has knockoff. There's a little bit of a absorber and then retaliate with a strong move. That's the main thing that my team works with. And then finally my Gyarados who actually has the Thunder Wave, the Taunt, the Roar, and the Aqua Tail. Many people say I should put Waterfall over Aqua Tail. I know the flinch chance, I know it works well with Thunder Wave, but I still don't give a damn because I do what I do. Now, if you guys don't know, the Attica World Network, we do what we do. I mean, a lot of people criticize the sets that I have, a lot of people criticize the playstyle that I have, as it doesn't really fit the competitive standards of small gone to the exact T that exists. But that's, that's not how I play. I play semi-competitive but mostly for the entertainment aspect and the fun of it as well i love this game with a passion so therefore i play it with that passion i don't play to win i play for fun i enjoy this game and this is why i feel that you know what i'm not even going to talk anymore let's just get into the damn battle guys it's it's a damn epic one so now we are going to start the match right here so, as I said, this match was against somebody named Anki F. Darkness. His name is Chuck in the game. And I start off with X-23, seeing as how I just wanted to start off with a random Pokemon to be able to throw him off. I don't usually start with X-23, but whatever, I go for it. So now, he's in there with his Road Arm Wash, and I do not want to take a hit, even though I do have decent special defense. So I go into my, um, not my Hydreigon, my Dredagon. And the Volt Switch is coming, of course. But since Dredagon is Dragon, I knew I'd be able to resist most of the things that this guy wants to do. So he switches out of there. And Dredagon mine actually carries the Stealth Rock. So I will be able to set up Stealth Rocks on an opportunity switch. This guy goes into his Gliscor. And um, he, he actually, that was actually a smart move to be able to set off his poison. But then again, this is a very well-known strategy. So this is nothing you guys don't know about. It's actually a very efficient strategy. That's why most people use it. But anyway, so this Gliscor goes out, right? I'm like, okay, fine. I'm probably going to be able to use this as ample opportunity to either set up or switch out into somebody who could handle the Gliscor a bit better. Now I go into my Bermuda, who is my Sigilith, as Gliscor probably won't be able to do much, but he actually has his Ferrothorn in there now. So now I'm looking at this as a great opportunity to be able to set up. But this guy, he knows Bermuda, or rather Sigilith, pretty well. So he goes back into his Gliscor, but my... Um, but my Bermuda actually went for the cycle shift, but I wasn't able to get the burn because, of course, Gliscor is in there. So now I call mine, seeing as how, you know what, I don't know what this guy wants to do, but the Stone Edge wouldn't be stabbed. But then again, I didn't want to take the Stone Edge per se, and he goes for the taunt, stopping my call mine. So automatically, this guy, he's playing really smart. He knows how to handle Sigilith. The last thing you want Sigilith to do is set up. So I'm like, whatever. Um, he goes and stops me from setting up, but it's not really that big of a deal because I figured I would just go for the Air Slash anyway since Liscor's special defense is nowhere near as good as his regular defense. But the Tyranitar comes in, and not only that, but the Air Slash misses. So whatever. But you know, get the fuck out of there because you're not equipped to handle a Tyranitar. Go in there, Virgo, because I figured that this guy most likely would not go for a move on the first turn and set up a sub or a Dragon Dance. So I figured Virgo can go in there. And since I have defense EVs, I can take anything this guy wants to throw at me. Earth Power, the sub, on the first turn. I figure, what can this guy do to me to hurt me? I mean, he's a damn Tyranitar besides Earthquake, and I have defense. But the Ice Beam comes in, and this guy must be carrying some special attack EVs because it does a decent amount of damage. And not only that, but... Ugh, damn it, the Ice Beam on Tyranitar. Everyone carries that, including Psycho for Jessica. Anyways, Earth Power. Now, this guy does have Sandstorm up, and he is a Rock type, so I know it is not going to finish him up. But it will do an ample enough amount of damage. Now here is a questionable play that I made. Why did I keep my Nidoqueen Queen in when I could have switched into somebody else that could take the Ice Beam better and then retaliate with another move? I didn't want to over predict here because what if he did go for the Stone Edge that turn and I sent in my Weavile as I did now? I didn't want to risk too much stuff. I need to be defensive, but you're going to see that I need Nidoqueen Queen later on in this game. So of course he switches out because no Tyranitar wants to stay in on a Weavile. I go for the Fake Out. I figured he would probably go into maybe a, his Gliscor or something to absorb a hit, but he goes into his Ferrothorn, so he gives me extra damage doing that. And because my X-23 is dealing with the Sandstorm and fighting the Ferrothorn at the same time, I'm going to get a lot of residual damage. And it's not going to be a pretty situation. It's a damn good thing I don't have Life Orb on my Weavile as well, or else it would have been taken out a while ago. But anyway, so now 
I go for the uh, low kick and because he has the leech seed with the sandstorm with the iron barbs it is going to rack up more damage than you can imagine and imagine if I had the life orb as well I would lose like almost half my HP right there I bring out X23 because I know this is a bad matchup I need it later on for revenge killing as what Weavile is meant to do now, Bermuda goes in there. Time to set up on this Feral Thorn, because I know he's not going to be able to do anything since what does he have? The Leech Seed, the Power Whip, the Gyro Ball would hurt. But I have Defense CVs, Max Defense in my Bermuda. A little bit of a weird set, but when you have the Max Defense with the Calm Minds and you're able to boost up, you're actually able to take a lot. I would go for the... I would go for the Cosmic Power, but I mean, I like having the Attack Boost rather than Special Attack Boost. So, go for the Air Slash again, because I figure this guy, he's not hes not specially defensive. He's not going to be able to take this well at all, but he still goes for the talk. So I'm like, whatever, man. I don't really mind too much. Your Glyph Score is not going to be able to stay in. And of course he isn't. He switches out, goes back into his Tyranitar, but thanks to the Stealth Rocks that my Dreadagon was able to set up earlier, his Tyranitar is going to take enough damage to the point where he will be able to be taken out with this Air Slash. So thank God for Stealth Rocks. It's a damn good thing I put them on the team. I used to play without them, and that was... Ah. Anyways, so now his Rodon Wash comes in, right? And I'm figuring this is a bad matchup. I do not want to fight this guy. So I go out and into my Duradigon, who is going to be able to absorb what the Rodon Wash wants to do as earlier in the battle. But I do have the Toxic, so it is going to be an ugly situation for me. But I say, fuck it, I'm going to deal with it. He goes into a Scizor now. And at this point, I do carry the Fire Punch on my Dreadagon, so I'm like, okay, I can catch this guy. But his Scizor, I forget the massive amount of damage that the U-Turn with the Stab and the Base 75 are going to be able to do. Takes out my Dreadagon totally, even though I have max HP and max attack. And he goes back into his Rodon Wash, so I'm in an ugly situation here. And I'm like, okay then, what can I do to be able to challenge this Rodon Wash? Ah, let's go in there on my special defensive wall, and as you guys are going to see, it is able to take the Volt Switch decently well, considering that, you know, it is a Rodom and a Stab, and I don't know what choice item he has. He might have Choice Scarf, he might have Choice Specs, but then again, it's definitely Choice Scarf, because this guy was outspeeding some shit. Anyways, this Glyph Score comes in, right? And I'm like, okay then. Well, I think I can tassel with this Glyph Score. I stay in there, and I decide this Glyph Score is going down, so... He starts to fight me, and it's a huge Star War from here, but it doesn't last too long. Don't worry, I would speed it up if it did last that long. Anyways, goes for the Earthquake, right? I, I test the Iron Head to see how much damage it would do. Now, seeing as how that did a pretty decent amount of damage, as you guys can see, I'm figuring, okay, I can go for another Sword Dance and live, and the Earthquake as it is, and then finish him off with the Iron Head on the next turn, because if I didn't Sword Dance this turn, the Iron Head wouldn't be able to finish him off on the next turn. So, I say, whatever, fuck it, let's just go. Sword Dance. Boom. And so now, I figure that next turn, I should be able to live that Earthquake. I mean, especially with the leftovers. Now, if the Sandstorm did damage me, and then I lost my leftovers, then I wouldn't have been able to live this Earthquake coming up. But thankfully, the Steel-type resists that Sandstorm, so I'm able to stay into the game here. And then go for the Iron Head here, which will take out this Gliscor after that second Sword Dance. So, pretty good move on my part, even though I did have to sacrifice a lot of HP. And considering the fact that Escavalier seems like he's an important Pokemon for this match since he resists Sandstorm, a bit of a questionable play there too, but I didn't want to... I didn't want that Gliscor around anymore. He was really setting some harsh traps for me. Anyways, I switched back out because I could use Escavalier later on for fodder. Not only that, but Gyarados can't stop this, um, this uh, Garchomp dead in his tracks. The main problem here... Oh my god, please do not be Sand Veil. That would not be a good thing right now. I do not like Sand Veil Garchomp. But, um... So, the Intimidate is able to take his attack down, but you're going to see this Rock Slide still does an immense amount of damage, guys, and it's like, damn, you know? I thought the Intimidate was supposed to stop that setup, so I'm like, okay, Aqua Tail this guy. Let's just see how much damage it would do. I mean, it's a neutral hit. He has Rough Skin. Okay, cool, so I don't have to worry about him dodging all my moves now, but this is still a problem because the Sandstorm is going to leave me with a non of HP where I don't know if I'll be able to survive the next Rock Slide, so I just go into my Escavalier, not predicting this. He goes with an out Rage because I guess this guy was like, okay, he's gonna switch. Let me catch something on the switch. You catch my Escavalier. So Escavalier goes out. Guess who the fuck comes back in? Motherfucking X23, ready to ice shard this guy to hell and back. And as you guys know, Outrage leaves you locked in. Time for them ice shards. Get Garchomp the fuck out of here. My friends, it is a wrap for this guy. So a huge, huge threat of his finally taken out, even though the Garchomp didn't really seem to do much other than Gar damage Gyarados, but hey, it works out in my favor. The Garchomp is done, and that's all I cared about. Now his um, Ferrothorn comes back in. 
not leaving X23 in there with him when I have other options. Bermuda, it's time to set up. Hey man, get those calm lines up. It already has max speed anyways, and it resists almost everything Ferrothorn wants to do, including the Leech Seed, thanks to Magic Guard. So hey, I can go in there and set up pretty easy and not have to worry about much. But he knows I have the Psycho Shift. So he goes straight into his Rotom, but he figured that I wouldn't go for the Psycho Shift there. So whatever, he stays in with the Rotom. I stay in because I'm like, whatever, I'm a boss, fuck it. I go for the Calm Mind and I figure, okay, with the Calm Mind boost, I should be able to live whatever this Rotom wants to do. Except for the fucking trick. And oh my god, as you can see, this is not going to be a pretty situation here. He gives me the Choice Scarf, takes my burning for orbs, so I mean, at least he does get burned, so that will give residual damage along with the Sandstorm to be able to take this Rotom out really quick. But now the Volt Switch comes in. I'm like, okay, I'm stuck on Roost. Let me see what this guy wants to do. He Volt Switches out, I should have predicted that. But, damn. And then if I did, he would have hit something with the Hydro Pump. So I was like, whatever, no problem at all. But now, this guy has his Scizor in there. I think we both have two Pokemon left at this point. No, I can't remember how many Pokemon each other has. But still, when I see this Scizor, I'm like, Gyarados, get in there. Because as you all know, Gyarados, hey, nice guy. Gyarados stops Scizor in his tracks. So I'm like, okay, deal with that, Gyarados. Intimidate this guy, make him go out. So now he U-turns out, of course. He doesn't want to stay in that bitch at all. Goes back into his Ferrothorn. I'm like, okay then, let's see what we can do here. What I can pull off, most likely, is maybe thinking about um, sending in Weavile and just dealing with the Ferrothorn as is because with the low kick I should be able to take down this Ferrothorn or I could possibly go into Bermuda and I figure Bermuda is the better option since it will be able to s at least air slash the guy to death. I can rely on hacks. Call me crazy for doing so but I think that the air slash reliability is justified in this situation because this battle is getting close and down to the wire so the air slash starts to come through as you guys are going to see. I'm getting some I'm, I'm getting some cookies here in this battle. So another one, cookies right there. So the air slash is working for me. And I go for another one, as you guys can see, cookies, cookies all day. My friends, that air slash is pulling work for me right now and I am not complaining one bit. Hey, I'm using hacks, fuck it, I don't care. Hey, shit, <laughs> I mean, this is an intense battle. This guy brings a full fledged sand team. I can't rely on some hacks, except I miss, get taken out. So boom, that's the end of the game for Bermuda. Two Pokemon left. I have two Pokemon left. How am I gonna pull this off? You guys will see. X23, go in there. Now, remember, all that residual damage, that is exactly what's going down here. This guy's protecting, letting that sandstorm damage rack up. Then he knows I'm gonna have the, the, um, the iron barb damage rack up as well when I hit this guy. So he's trying to get the double protect, but thankfully that doesn't go through. The low kick comes, hits Ferrothorn right in his dick. That thing goes down no problem at all from that low kick. I start throwing does seem like a decently heavy Pokemon. Now, I'm still in there, taking the Sandstorm damage. Weavile is not going to live for too much longer. I have to figure out a way to take down the Scizor, and I only have two Pokemon left. I think now, okay, Gyarados, go in there, intimidate, resist the bullet punch, whatever. And I guess at this point, when the guy sees the damage from this bullet punch, he's like, damn, I got max damage there. I don't want to risk Scizor taking damage because he's going to take the Aqua Tail, lose health from that, and then come back into the um, Stealth Rock to be able to take priority moves from Weavile. He might just die from all that damage. So he does a smart play here. Switches into his Rodom, and I just, I go for the Aqua Tail, but it misses the Rodom. So that is one thing that might have messed with the game, but whatever hacks happens all the time so i'm not complaining too much but that road arm's in there taking that burn damage like a boss so i don't know what the hell is going to go down at this point but i'm feeling like whatever i take the trick and this guy he gives me the flame orb actually so wait a minute he gives me yeah he gives me the flame orb so now i'm dealing with a little bit of a headache here because this road arm is basically crippling the gyarados so all the options that I have now are Gyarados, who's probably at 21 HP, who's going to die at the end of this turn anyways because of the burn damage, and my Weavile, who's at 57 HP with a whole bunch of priority. If I had gotten that earlier Aqua Seal off on the Scizor, who is his last Pokemon, the Scizor might have had a little bit of a harder time dealing with my Pokemon. But you know what? We're both on our last ones, and at this point now, the only thing I can do is go for priority. Stack up the Fake Out. Let's see if it does enough damage to the uh, Scizor, and it does not. But couple that along with the ice shard and you guys will see what the hell goes on in this situation the ice shard comes in am i able to take the scissor down i sadly am not and on one one his um scissor is able to bullet punch me and take out my wave off so my friends that makes the game close right there which is one hell of a finale a one one defeat 
but it, to, in my opinion, I don't really give a damn who wins or who loses because that battle had me sweating at the end of it. It was like I popped a molly or something. I couldn't believe how crazy that battle got. It is Pokemon, but my God, I take that game seriously. And when I play, I don't play to win. I just play to have one hell of a game. And my friends, that worked out exactly. The, that's exactly why I'm broadcasting this to you right now. So, I mean... Once again, thank you for having me on this channel. I really appreciate it. Zenon, once more, you're a great dude for letting me host on your channel. All your subscribers, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I mean, it is a little bit of an impromptu thing, and I am somewhat of a random black guy who looks like Will Smith on your YouTube channel. But I mean, hey, if you like the shit that I do, if you like the battle, this is everything that we do on my channel and more. A lot of variety on my channel, a lot of things different. We have a ranking system, bronze, gold, silver bronze gold silver that's the order of course um and we basically just do a wide variety of promotional videos and such music videos product reviews things like that so if you did feel the content then by all means come by to the Attica world network and give it a try i think you might like what you see even though we don't only do pokemon but we do mostly pokemon so that's all it is i mean this video went on long enough anyways my name is Etika, Etika world network thank you for supporting the Elko World Network's in on, and I'll talk to you guys later on. Take care of yourselves, and please have a good one.